So, okay. Uh, good to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then I good no to silly go. jokes from my side. Next Hi, one. I'm uh, Gabriele Falasca, and uh, I want to talk, you, to talk with you about uh, the cache strategies for, for uh, progressive web app. Okay, you know that? <laughs> this is uh, the Chrome Dino when, uh, when you are offline. Offline is a problem for uh, the information flush. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. For the information flush uh, in uh, <coughs> of, a, of an application because uh, you don't have the data. And now I will show you how to how to manage the data also for offline. Um, news from uh, last week. Google Play has uh, announced that uh, Progressive Web App can be uploaded uh, on the store. And uh, so you can install uh, Progressive Web App directly from Google Play Store. It's a good thing. What is a Progressive Web App, you know? Okay, Progressive Web App is uh, an hybrid of, from, uh, of uh, web application and uh, native application, okay? is a uh, a web application that uh, you can install uh, on your mobile device uh, and uh, it has a look like uh, look and feel of the of a native application okay if you have uh, an existing uh, web application if you want to migrate it to a progressive web app you have to follow this step you have to make sure uh, uh, that your application follow the http TTPS pr protocol you have to think about the caching, that is uh, the object of this talk. You have to, to implement a, an add-on add on home screen button for the mobile visualization. You have to use uh, all API you need and enjoy. Okay, let's see a recap uh, for uh, server side re rendering versus uh, client side, re side rendering. Okay, uh, server-side rendering is uh, the most of the website uh, are also in server-side rendering. So you, the browser makes a request to the server and the server returns a complete static page. And uh, after the page loads uh, all remote uh, assets, uh, CSS, JS, uh, images, uh, and every action on the page causes the, the full reload uh, of the browser tab. Okay. In client-side rendering, the server, the server returns uh, only a blank uh, template, okay? And uh, after, through JS, you, you have to fetch the data and show to the user. But uh, the pro is that every action on the page reloads only the part of the code uh, where, where action is triggered. Okay. If you want to cache, to cache uh, things in a server-side rendering, you can cache uh, CSS or JavaScript or asset and the static page. Okay, in, in, clients, uh, in a client-side rendering application, you can cache uh, CSS, JavaScript, template, images, and uh, you can cache the data received from the network for uh, offline use. If you have uh, simple data, you can use a cache API, but uh, if your data is uh, a bit complex, uh, you, you can use index.db. And uh, you can uh, manage the offline state uh, through JavaScript in this mode. Or uh, checking uh, navigator.offline flag, or uh, there is a solution even based uh, in JavaScript. You can catch the offline and uh, online events. Okay, you know service worker? There are uh, a piece of code that sit uh, between the application and the network, and uh, uh, the service worker can uh, cache uh, things, can uh, intercept all the fetch requests, uh, and uh, you can uh, use uh, particular APIs, such as web, web payment or, I don't know. Okay, what you can do with service worker? caching things, register for push notification, use uh, various API, I just see, and uh, 
other things that uh, that uh, okay this is uh, uh, the first uh, strategy for caching uh, things in progressive web app you have to to uh, create your app follow the schema you have to separate the application shell so the all the scaffolding uh, all the scaffolding part of the application from the dynamic content okay um, in this mode, when you start the application, you can cache immediately the application shell, and after you you can uh, get the content uh, dynamically. Okay, let's start with the, the real caching strategies. Let's start the, talking about the when to cache resources. Okay, this is the first approach. You can cache resources uh, on install. Okay, when uh, when a service worker is instantiated, he trigger um, an install event, and uh, in the callback of this event, you can um, is ideal for caching the, all the, the dependencies uh, of the application, so JavaScript, CSS, images, uh, and uh, and uh, other uh, other data you can consider uh, statically for your application. Okay. Another uh, event is uh, activate when uh, you update your service worker, and uh, the the new service worker is uh, is activated. The the old one uh, is not is not working anymore. So you can catch the activate event uh, of new service worker, and uh, use this event for purge the old data purge the whole uh, service worker uh, dirt and uh, you can manage migra migration schema for your uh, index db okay for, for caching resources uh, you can use also a uh, user interaction so um, are you you say read later save for line buttons on the click of the button i cache uh, the data the proper data so, uh, as you can see, the, the cache API is not available only in service worker, but you can use uh, also in the regular page. Another, um, another strategy is uh, caching data on network response. It's uh, a, good, a, good, uh, a good approach for uh, uh, not big, dat big data, because uh, for uh, a moment, uh, uh, you have two instances of the data, as you see, response.clone. So if you fetch uh, very bigger data, it could be a problem of memory, because uh, the, the, the weight is doubled for a moment. Okay, uh, you can uh, cache uh, things also on, on push message. You know push notification, yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, with service worker, you can you can register for a push notification service, and if you want, you can uh, you can uh, store data in cache with a push notification when uh, the app is closed. But uh, the device receives the notification, and uh, and we start to to caching uh, the data of the notification. This is uh, a new API, but uh, in this moment is not standard. The background sync API in JavaScript for ser service workers. You can uh, start uh, a sync, uh, a background sync uh, update of the data, and uh, during this update you can cache the the things uh, you are updated. But uh, sync API is not. Uh, a W3C standard in, the, in this moment. Okay, this is a cool approach. Is uh, the approach used, uh, for example, uh, for the WhatsApp avatar? Are you sure? When a user changes avatar, uh, you continue to see the old one for a bunch of time, and uh, after uh, the and uh, the other launch of the application, uh, they update. Okay, I show to the user. Uh, the data I have in, ca in cache, but I recover the new data from the network for uh, the next time. It's ideal for uh, if you have uh, data that 
uh, you don't need uh, the last uh, update. Okay. Okay. Now let's see how to respond to re uh, to request. With uh, we can see when use uh, cache data or when use uh, network data or um, let's see also hybrid approach. Okay. This is the simplest. Oh, I have a fetch. Okay, make the fetch. This is uh, ideal for uh, all uh, not get request. So from sub submission, you can cache the the request because uh, you have to send data to the server. And uh, for uh, non get request, you can do anything. Um, another, um, this is the most used uh, strategy. Okay. This is the standard strategy, and uh, all over uh, all other strategies can be exception uh, from this. Uh, oh, I have a fetch. Okay, I have the result. Yes, this is the result. No, I don't have the result. Okay, I, I made the request on the network. This uh, is uh, the old approach of the of the social network, of uh, all social network. Okay. I try to recover the, the latest data, but if the network fails, I show you the, cache, uh, the caching data. And uh, now this is the new approach. Uh, the code is split uh, in two slides because it is uh, longer. This is the code uh, you, you have to use uh, in the application page, and this is the code of the ser service worker. Okay. And, uh, in this uh, strategy, you show immediately to the user the cache data, and um, after show the data, you can uh, recover the latest data on the network and show and put it in the same feed of the user. Okay, so this is uh, the code of the service worker, ideal for uh, content that updates uh, frequently, such as. Uh, social media timelines. Okay, other strategies, uh, but uh, uh, less used is uh, cache and network race and uh, generic fallback. Generic fallback is uh, the classical uh, error page. So uh, I, I don't have the data, sorry. And uh, cache and network race is an extremely particular uh, situation. You can use it only if you are sure that the uh, device where is installed the app are very slow di discuss uh, access. Okay, so I start uh, contemporary the cache call and the network call and I use the, the first result, uh, the result of the, of the winner of the race. Okay. Oh, let's see a real service worker that uh <coughs> Okay. You see the code? Okay. Uh. Now you you can read. Okay. This is a service worker for a Pokédex. You know the Pokédex Pokémon? Okay. On install event, I I uh, cached the. Uh, the main chunk of my application is a React, React application, okay? The main chunk of the application, the main JavaScript. I fetched the, the, the list of the Pokemon because uh, the Pokemon uh, are uh, there. And I, I cached the, the Pokemon images, okay? I create a function for uh, generate an array of uh, <coughs> images URL and I cache it. And after I intercept the fetch, I use the uh, different strategies for for uh, many cases, but uh, only for uh, learning purposes because are as n are not the optimal strategies for uh, for uh, these cases. Okay, if I want to see an ability of a Pokemon, I use the network cache fallback approach. Okay, and. Uh, if I want to see the move of the Pokemon, I use the network only. I use this because I can show you the difference between cache call and network call. 
Okay. And uh, for uh, other co other call, I use the network cache fallback uh, approach. Okay. Let's see the application. Oh. Okay. So if I refresh the page, you can see this, this is uh, all Pokemon images. Okay. If I open an URL and uh, I see the the request timing is uh, zero millisecond because I have already in my cache. The same is for uh, the call uh, of the Pokemon list, zero millisecond, and uh, is uh, so Bulbasaur. Uh, okay. And if you want to to see the detail, if I if I want to see an ability. I, I have to recover the data from the network, okay? And uh, the timing uh, is, uh, the request is lowly than uh, the others, okay? If I return to the home and I refresh, it's uh, instantaneously, okay? So I, I'm finished. Have you got a question? I've been doing a little bit of work with PWAs, and one question that keeps coming back from other people involved in the project is, what happens if the app is not connected for a period of time, because you can't guarantee that the caches are going to be kept, so if the app how do you is handle not that? Cache it. So you can't guarantee that the cache gets maintained, persisted for a long period of time. It might get flushed yeah, out of the system. Uh, the cache how do you, what sort of strategies have you got for that if you're not going to be connected to a network? So the example I can give is people out on a shipping boat, They've got their app and they're doing some work using that. They might be away from shore for a couple of days. Okay, so, uh, so the cache is persistent, but uh, they are uh, lim as uh, limited space, okay? And uh, some browser, as to when the, this limit is reached, uh, start to flush uh, all the data. And uh, Safari polish the cache randomly. Yeah. Uh, randomly, it uh, starts the cache polish. Uh, are there any strategies cash so are there any strategies that you've come across to help case that project using other parts of web APIs maybe to maintain to work strategies? with that? Strategies? Are, are there any particular strategies that you've come across to help with that situation? Uh, you have to study that's all, that's, case yeah. for case. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what we got to as well. I was just wondering. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. So about the previous question, I, I, yeah, one of the strategies maybe the, the the persistent data, right? You can you can ask for this persistent. Sorry, uh, can you? Yeah, so, sorry, can I? Ask, yeah, so I was saying about the previous question. Maybe I can just add there's a pers persist API, right? Not available everywhere. But anyway, that's not my question. My question is, what's the again? What's the strategy to update the application itself? So when I, there's a new version of the application, right? Yeah. So, so how to deal with that? So I install it with the service worker, and then how, how to inform the user? Yeah, when you install a uh, new service worker, you can catch the activate, activate event uh, of a uh, new service worker, and uh, you can clear the old data and uh, update uh, your, uh, your data. Yeah, but, but how do I know that I need to f delete my, my old version of the application and download the new one? Uh, how to check the new version? This depends of... Uh, so the cache is versionated, okay? So you can uh, use uh, a different cache for uh, any version of the application. And uh, on activate event, you can uh, purge the older cache and uh, use uh, also the, the new with the new service worker. Okay? Other question? Yeah, thanks. Um, it's not a question, it's an addition. You don't have to uh, implement the whole caching strategies. At first, there are um, a lot of tutorials out there. Okay. And secondly, there are libraries for that out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Workbox. One of them is, uh, for instance, Workbox. Yeah, it's yeah, a pretty yeah. good library. You probably know it, but the other others don't. So. 
yeah, yeah. Workbox, but I I want to show without it because uh, it has no sense. But it, I think it's important uh, when you that you say it is to know okay. the concept. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Was a question? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.